We are here with um, Emilio Fantin, artist, friends from Free Home University and Ecoversity, um, anthroposophic doctor Cinzia Di Meglio. They are the one who proposed us this conversation and invited Dr. Rossana Beccarelli. And we are here also with Josefina Guzman and Pedro Regades from the Centro de Investigaciones El Studio Transmodernos. They hosted the last global gathering of ecoversities last October in Michoacan in their beautiful center and together with their incredible group of healers and, and students. So I hope they can also talk a little bit about their, their space. So welcome everyone, thank you so much. I don't want to take any more space. Please Emilio, follow up and, um, and guide us through this conversation. Welcome to everybody. Um, my wife, Cinzia, and I uh, have been discussing a lot about healing during the emergency state. And uh, uh, I'm going to share some of the contents of this uh, um, very intense uh, dialectic uh, relationship. So um, I have highlighted three points. One is uh, uh, communication and information regarding health. Uh, the second point is the dehumanization of, uh, uh, of uh, relationship uh, and healing relationships. And the third point is the scientific uh, paradigms and uh, conceptual errors. So in the text that has circulated with the call, I have listed a series of links among a thousand and thousand of documents that were posted uh, on the net, uh, in the net. And uh, um, this was taken, these uh, links were taken from March to May. Uh, of course, after that, uh, many other documents have been uh, listed, have been uh, uploaded, but um, I didn't, the text was already edited. Uh, anyhow, I found uh, in those documents the same ambiguity that I found in the document that I have uh, edited in my text. Uh, no one of the documents that uh, I checked can be 100% trust. Uh, there is always something uh, ambiguously said that hide an interest, both from institutional culture, but mm, many times also from uh, counterculture. Uh, so, um, of course, it, it's very difficult to um, look uh, for something in the net with this uh, big confusion and mess. And, uh, once that uh, uh, surf in the net is looking for um, some information that confirm uh, her or his opinion. Uh, this is the easiest way to uh, look for uh, an information. But I try to avoid that and I try to get over uh, my sympathy. And uh, in the text, uh, I collected uh, some uh, contradictory uh, documents which regard the specific arguments uh, related to the, to the health. In the communication field, there are some infrastructure uh, which produce some uh, self-referential uh, automatism, which generates some, uh, um, uh, some idea, some idea which are uh, uh, taken as given, as original, and that uh, uh, 
these are specific idea uh, that are able to impact or change our our consciousness uh, so they this idea come from self referential auto automatism this self referential automatism and they uh, parasite any form of communication and they uh, nourish themselves uh, through those uh, uh, feelings that sure uh, sure us uh, and that come from our uh, ideology or from our believings from from our creed um, so um, we have to make an effort uh, not to take distance from other people, but uh, to take distance from ourselves. And um, the second point is uh, the dehumanization of the health that is also uh, divided in three aspects. Uh, uh, the first aspect is the um, statistical approach in uh, medicine. The second aspect is the uh, therapeutic uh, uh, protocol. And the third aspect is the auto, uh, automation and digitalization of, uh, of uh, the medicine. So uh, generalizing a, a statistical mm -hmm. approach, uh, uh, for example, for uh, complex phenomena like uh, uh, COVID-19 is uh, it can be very dangerous because you have a bad interpretation of the epidemic. And also generalizing the prevention of a possible infection with the idea of a mass therapy that means uh, a mandatory vaccination could be uh, something that uh, uh, reduce and uh, uh, um, and and makes uh, completely wrong the vaccinatory therapy itself. Uh, the second point is the uh, medical protocol. And uh, through medical protocol, a doctor can be saved from a juridical problem, but uh, it condemns the patient to take uh, um, some medicine that he doesn't need and in some uh, occasion even worse that damage him and uh, the medical protocol reduced the uh, medical consulting in a short meeting and also it standardized all the medicine so is the first step uh, to uh, a vision of dehumanized uh, medicine in which uh, the uh, singularity of the individual is excluded uh, and uh, um, a, 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 another way of generalize, standardize uh, the relationship is claimed. The third uh, uh, point is the automation and digitalization. There is a, a, a strong a rooted scientific paradigm uh, which uh, affirms that uh, uh, the less error we have, uh, the more close to perfection we are. Or, or we can also reverse the sentence, uh, the more uh, automated and uh, digitalized tools and devices we have, uh, uh, less error we have. So this is an idea, again, of uh, uh, excluding the relationship between uh, a doctor and the patient and uh, um, promoting, improving uh, the uh, relationship between the patient and the machine. And uh, also, I think, uh, of course, we try to exclude error, but we cannot exclude the error uh, a priori. This is a really uh, <laughs> a great, a big error. I mean, because uh, error is something that is part of our experience. It's a sign. It's something that can transform our point of view, our uh, vision. It's something very important that we have to take uh, in account. And also another element uh, is that excluding the relationship, this automatization, automation, excluding the relationship, uh, the close relationship between the patient and the doctor, this uh, uh, provoke uh, a, a, a rupture, I mean, uh, uh, and, uh, and make uh, uh, this uh, 
a relationship uh, missed in, in, in terms of uh, don't uh, use uh, um, a very important element, uh, therapeutic element in the relationship that are, for example, a fiction, uh, that are uh, intuition, that are empathy. So all these things are uh, have would be excluded if uh, we uh, exaggerate in using. Uh, of course, uh, <coughs> there is a, a branch of the medicine that use uh, uh, artificial intelligence and a robot, but this has to be limited. Of course, it cannot be the uh, the fundamental um, that uh, hold on a thinking for a future medicine. And uh, the third uh, thing that I want to talk about is uh, the uh, conceptual error, because not only um, scientists and uh, rulers or the administrator or experts make errors, but also we people, we are carrying on our shoulder many prejudices coming from our Western uh, civilization. civilization. And uh, um, uh, for example, when I was uh, uh, looking, surfing the net, I, I found uh, many people that were trying to uh, individuate those uh, who were behind things with the, this idea of strategies and this idea of uh, conspiracy. Well, this is also um, look for an enemy, of course an enemy who uh, exploit us, uh, who repress us, who take advantage of us. But at the same time, we are defining an enemy, we define ourselves as victim. So we are going to build these uh, borders of a territory in which we are imprisoned. We should uh, go over these uh, uh, borders and uh, maybe uh, pay attention uh, uh, to those uh, uh, automatism which compromise uh, our our interpretation of the life, and uh, for me, um, COVID-19 uh, has been important also because uh, it uh, it reveals that uh, uh, there is a similarity between the behavior of the virus, which affect the body, and the behavior the behavior of this uh, automatism which affect the consciousness. They uh, share the same uh, strategy. So this was uh, a, a brief introduction of all the things that, that we have been discussing with Cynthia. And uh, I also asked her three questions about all this content. And uh, so I, I invite uh, Cynthia to, to speak about and to answer my question if uh, she wants. And uh, I think she will explain better than me and in a more understandable way, a profound way, many uh, different aspects of the relationship between Parchin and doctor and this idea of, also of dehumanized medicine. Hello to everybody. I'm happy to be with you. I'm sorry because my, of my English that is very uncertain, so I need to read my intervention. But later, if you want to ask me something, Alessandra can help us. So the first uh, question that Emilio posed to me is, what do you think of the impact of communication in the context of public health? Communication, information are cultural keys at the moment, around which two elements are focused. The development of each person's awareness with regard to the increase of data, but also the risk of manipulation, influencing. These two words are interesting in the Italian language. Influenza, flu, influence, and contagio, contagion. Influenza in the sense that goes in the direction of manipulation, but also influenza as flu, as illness. What do these have in common? Contagion is a form of imitation, an influencing that is the residual of the way a small baby learns via imitation. 
This our most vulnerable, infantile, imitative side is influenced until it can be manipulated. Information requires a large effort of presence, the capacity to judge, to evaluate. How much information can I process? How much can I critically analyze in order to transform it? COVID-19 infodemia has brought with it a black wave of fear that has made a game of the virus. Steiner spoke about, of the presence of viruses, viruses and bacteria as the consequence of lies and illusions, and of fear as the best terrain for cultivating epidemics. Second question is, what should be the role of the doctor in our time? It seems to me that there is a lack of humanistic culture in medicine a scientific humanism. In the past, a doctor would study philosophy. Medicine was meant as medical art. The development of the doctor's subjectivity was considered instrumental for the treatment of the patient, which should, fo which should focus on idea that behind medical knowledge and ongoing holistic education is necessary for the doctor and the therapist, a work on the self that will enable us to refine element of his being in order to develop and reinforce capacities of intuition, perception, and empathy with the passion, giving value to traditional knowledge associated with a more objective and scientific awareness. Greater data availability needs still screening from the doctor whose interpretation is augmented by the capacity for empathy and experience. Otherwise, it's just a mechanical repetition, an automatism. It is necessary, on one hand, to deconstruct the current idea of illness as a casual and misfortune event caused by an external noxa, it means an external element, that needs to be drastically removed as soon as possible. What must be done is to give again dignity and meaning to the experience of illness as a very important moment in the patient's life. Doctors can help the patient in reappropriating and elaborate this event so that the experience can be fully integrated in the patient's biography. We are not talking about interpreting or explaining the reason of the illness even if there are some medical and psychological approaches that do that with interesting results, but sometimes risking not understanding what the patient is experiencing. The patient should be accompanied to go through his past, taking into account the illness he is facing and looking for meaningful connections, coincidences, suggestions, as the present situation even so painful, will become full, with full dignity part of their background. Nowadays, there is a false heroic narrative, an idea of illness as an enemy that the doctor must defeat. In case of severe illness, such as cancer, sometimes the patient feel their body as a battlefield on his own arm as a battlefield on this fight between the doctor and the illness. And they are not invited or involved in taking part in the recovering process. Anthroposophical medicine strongly underlines the fact that illness is an essential part of the human story. It connects to strengthening of the consciousness of identity as the core of the self. Let's not forget that the immunity system playing an important role in our medical knowledge today is defined by science as a biological system having the role of recognizing and distinguishing the self itself from other than itself. It is called immunity identity as every single human cell is the stamp of our DNA, which is individual. Immunity identity, also in relation to illness, 
should be seen as a, as a stimulus for inner growth, an occasion to transform the pre-inherited elements. As the crisis brought by the illness is an occasion to develop ourselves and to overcome what impact us culturally. The refinement and development of our human experience, the wisdom that can be experienced after an illness has to do with a process that lasts through an entire life. Let's think about the value of the microbiota in relation to the massive presence of lymph nodes in our intestine. It is called the abdominal brain, where a vital collaboration takes place among the external world, the multitude of microorganisms that live in the intestine, and the inner human world. Something else that I consider important that is not so ob obvious is the relationship between the doctor and the patient, a relationship that has an enormous risk to become one of power. It is necessary to center on the therapeutic relation as it is the first condition for the treatment to be successful. It, acti it activates the patient's potential of recovery and establish the trust for another human being taking responsibility for their treatment. I must also underline that the way the doctor acts can only be an act of personal responsibility. Without this element, the act itself is partly disempowered. I believe that the doctor in their own self-education and inner growth must be aware of the risk of power relationship in order to understand the best way to assist and to be close to patients. In my opinion, the best way is an accompaniment to support the patient in navigating the journey from one shore, the pathological situation, to the other, the possibility of recovery or of finding a new balance. If we may imagine this journey being undertaken with the, with the ferry boat, the doctor has the tools and the knowledge to navigate without playing the role of a guide, the sage or the expert. It is the patient who needs to have the possibility to choose consciously their part to healing. And this does not mean just signing a release form. The last uh, question is, which contribution do you think anthroposophic medicine can give in the context of non-conventional medicine? I try to explain something about my work, about anthroposophical medicine. Anthroposophical medicine is a complex medical system based on Rudolf Steiner philosophy and investigations. Rudolf Steiner was born in the Middle Europe between the 19th and the 20th century. He focused himself in investigating through an appropriate development of the reasoning, the invisible part of reality. That has created a syncretism of the esoteric and exoteric traditional knowledge actualized for modern consciousness that is much more logical and objective. From this complex vision that is based on the osmosis among human being, world and cosmos, is born the fourfold image of the man as a being formed by four shells or levels that can be seen by us only in their more material side, the physical body that we have in common with the mineral world. This physical body is weaved into a vital part called the etheric body, according to ancient traditions. And that is the part gifted of the capacity of growth and reproduction. The one that we can see acting, especially in the vegetal world, that we have in common with. The soul has got sensation and capacity of movement that is also typical of the animal world, called astral body for its origin. Let's think about the animal images of the zodiac. We call it also psych, and we experience it in the abilities of thinking, feeling, and willing. Finally, there is the eye that has its root in the spiritual eternal dimension, 
pre-existent to the birth and that proceeds after the death, embedded in the, in the cosmic dimension. That means a deep belonging of the human being to the world, the sharing of its elements and reigns, and of the man and the world to the cosmos. One of the results of that is the comprehension of the use of the substances coming from the three reigns of nature as medications due to their connection. This connection reveals itself up to the physical chemical analysis that recognize in the substances the elements that act on specific organs and apparat apparatuses, but also in the signatura, as said by alchemists, that is to say, what appears in the semblance of its being, and that can already tell us which organ of the being the substance can be healthy for. For instance, we generally, we generally use roots for nervous system diseases, leaves for lungs ailments, and flowers for those of the metabolic and sexual systems. This, absent, this happens, as man shows, looks like an upside down plant. All the above mentioned elements bring us to a deep respect for the earth and the living being that inhabited it as organs of a single living organism. They also bring us to a vision of the earth with its anima mundi, as it was called in the Middle Age, and with its own spiritual essence that takes part in the spirit spirituality of the cosmos. The earth itself evolves and has got its aims. In the case of illness, the noxa, the external element, is the event that acts in the acts in pathological process only because the organism let it enter, or perhaps even even needs it. The importance of the ground, meant as susceptibility to get healed, is known in all the traditional medical medicine. Prevention is reduced to restrictive and suppressive procedures. But there is a new branch of medicine called the salutogenesis, that instead gives more importance to the lifestyles, food, environment, work, physical activity, that are fundamental for the reinforcing of the ground. This branch is more concerned with the study of the motive of health, instead of being concerned with pathogenesis, that is, on the contrary, the motive of illness. Dr. Antonovsky, the founder of this new branch, introduces the concept of sense of coherence, believing that the way a human being lo looks at life has a po positive influence on his health, where life is perceived as a coherent, structured, structured and comprehensible world. Together with the concept of resilience, in other words, the inbred ability of an organism to positively react to a traumatic or stressing situation. This knowledge should orientate a wide research field in medicine. This vision introduces us to a wider idea of therapy, above all in case of chronic illnesses, where the artistic element, meant as practice of an art, may have a preventive or curative effect as it happens in art therapies. What I want to say is that values that inspire our life orientate it in a more or less healthy dim dimension. This way is essential to take care of the well-being of the world and the humanity. Moreover, taking care of our inner life meant as quality of our intents, thoughts, feelings and actions are essential for a reinforcing action of the health and community.
Josefita and Pedro, if you want to continue or bring some of the points they raised into your own practice. The first thing we want to share is uh, related to the last point, no? uh, salutogenesis, no? because uh, for us, uh, health is uh, something integral no? uh, to the person and the community. And we propose to move uh, from illness to health no? as the focus. And uh, it has been clear during the uh, epidemics no? that the interest uh, has been uh, in the epidemics, the focus uh, was uh, illness, not prevention, nor uh, health. No? The second point uh, we want to share is about a uh, the responsibility hmm? and uh, what uh, Emilio uh, tells about a, a doctor and patient, no? because for us, the very construction of someone as patient is already a, a matter of power and is uh, ideological. No? So uh, we uh, talk about a people in a healing process, no? in Spanish we say sanado and sanada, no? uh, and never patient because a patient uh, has no responsibility for uh, its own, uh, his own or her own uh, health. No? Uh, in, in 1975, uh, Ivan Illich uh, that lived in Mexico uh, said that there were uh, three big problems related to medicalization. No? Uh, now it's uh, even pan-medicalization. No? Uh, the first one is that uh, uh, allopathy produces uh, damage no? as long as uh, health. No? Uh, the second is that uh, it hides uh, uh, the interests of a uh, big pharma. No? And the third thing uh, he used to say was that uh, there is an expropriation of uh, the patient, no? of the uh, autonomy of uh, each one in the construction of uh, his health and uh, his uh, well-being. No? Uh, the third thing uh, is about uh, uh, the coloniality. No? Uh, for us, is a uh, a main task no? uh, to break uh, the ways of uh, feeling, uh, thinking, and acting uh, in the Western uh, patterns, no? including uh, pharmacologization, because uh, pharmacology is a way of constructing health uh, that has uh, uh, just a few uh, centuries, no? but uh, humanity has been dealing uh, with. Uh, health in many other ways no? and is still doing it uh, in our countries. No? We always uh, stay in touch and uh, uh, share uh, strategies with the ancestral uh, uh, knowledge of uh, our people. No? And uh, it's very important because for us, uh, uh, the capitalist uh, in, uh, hegemony is associated not only uh, uh, to money, no? uh, to class, but also to uh, ethnic and cultural aspects with gender no? and even with age, for example. Okay, we, we cannot uh, study uh, epidemics without considering the coloniality, no? uh, the aspects of uh, culture and uh, ethnicity. Uh, gender, no, and uh, the, uh, and even age, no, because uh, in this uh, moment, people that have more than eighty years are the most uh, affected, no, and uh, if they are uh, have high tension and uh, have diabetes, etc., no, uh, are fat, are uh, those groups that are more affected, no. 
And uh, the fourth thing we want to share is uh, about our focus uh, in therapy. You know? For us, uh, we call our therapy a therapy of consciousness and love, you know? because uh, for us, uh, we are not interested in just changing the, the physical state of a person, but we are interested in uh, the growing uh, of uh, consciousness. No? And for us, the main uh, focus is the uh, beliefs and emotions. No? We uh, have a, a healed many people during decades just treating emotions uh, and beliefs no? and finally people uh, find uh, their health but uh, uh, as something that is uh, a derivation of changing their state of uh, feeling and, and mind. No? And uh, also, uh, for us, it's very important the acceptance of death. I, uh, we think that uh, Western thought uh, uh, want uh, to fly from uh, death, for, but for us, uh, each one will die when uh, the moment is uh, 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 the one that corresponds to each one. No? Uh, we think that a, a big problem in medicine is that uh, they try to avoid death that is unavoidable. No? Uh, and we depart from the acceptance uh, of uh, death as part of, uh, of life. No? And uh, we live uh, uh, thinking in well-being and in buen vivir no? and in health. And we live uh, to medicine uh, uh, the illness. No? And talking a little bit with uh, the ex exposition of uh, Emilio, no? uh, I think that uh, the deep uh, uh, beliefs are uh, more profound and uh, sometimes are not conscient, uh, not, not uh, uh, arrived to consciousness because the uh, idea, for example, of contagion, no? Uh, has to be put in, in, in question, no? or uh, the idea of uh, uh, which are the prejudices of uh, the Western uh, civilizations uh, is uh, very, very important uh, for us. No? And we share most of the points of view about uh, the anthroposophical point of view, the uh, identity, the uh, idea of a uh, cosmos, the idea of the importance uh, of uh, 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 be aware of uh, the big pharma uh, interests no? uh, and the importance uh, of uh, empathy, uh, of intuition. No? Uh, in this uh, uh, moment, we have an uh, international uh, healing uh, uh, support. No? And uh, the idea of having contact uh, with people that uh, are uh, sick in this moment has been uh, crucial in, in many, in many moments. No? Uh, what those ideas to share with you? Eh, quiero eh, cerrar, un, bueno, concluir un poquito eh, pensando en, en que el peligro no es el virus. El peligro tampoco es el sistema político, ni los corazones oscuros que quieren ganar dinero y poder. El peligro está en cada uno de, de nosotros y de nosotras. Porque con mucha facilidad entregamos nuestro poder personal a cualquiera. Y nos dejamos someter. Y no solo eso, también ayudamos a reproducir ese, peli, ese riesgo. ¿no? También ayudamos a reproducir esa alienación a los grupos políticos o... Este, a los sistemas de salud, etcétera, que finalmente siempre ha sido un, una catástrofe porque cuando aparece una clínica de salud se llena de enfermos y aparece otra y otra y otra y el sistema de salud en todo el mundo es este, eh, insuficiente. Quiere decir que sirve para pura fregada, no sé cómo se dice eso en inglés. Entonces, <risa> este, eh, nosotros eh, somos... 
personas que tenemos que recuperar nuestra, nuestros principios, nuestro contacto con la cultura y nuestro contacto con la naturaleza. Eh, nos convertimos en humanos cascarón, ¿sí? en espera de ser llenados de miedo, de necesidad y de enfermedad. Eh, yo quiero cerrar este comentario eh, proponiendo que hagamos una pandemia, que hagamos una pandemia de salud, no de enfermedad, de salud, una pandemia de alegría, una pandemia de buena alimentación, de ejercicio, una pandemia de meditación, una pandemia de amor, una pandemia de gratitud. Y que nos movamos de ese foco, de ese ritmo mundial al que a todos nos pusieron a bailar. Y cada vez hay más miedo. Imagínense si todos los memes, si toda lo, la información que circula por los medios estuviera en el centro la construcción de una persona consciente, la construcción de una persona sana, la construcción de una persona alegre, la construcción de una persona amorosa. Eh, todos esos recursos que estamos utilizando ahora, enfocados a entender a un bichito que ni siquiera podemos ver y que estuvieran enfocados en entender un ser humano íntegro, este, eh, con, un, con principios solidarios, en comunidad, en desarrollo humano, personal, espiritual, mental, emocional, etc. Gracias. Rosana, would you like to continue? Hello, uh, thanks for the invitation. Um, I'm really uh, very interested in what you have said. Uh, what I would like to focus on is that we have lost a lot of our, let's say, culture, ideological culture, and uh, even awareness that we used to have uh, during the 60s and 70s years in uh, last century. I remember in particular the, uh, the works of my Ivan Illich and Michel Foucault, where uh, all the representation that you have done, that you have just done, was already there. And uh, we perfectly knew that medicine was an instrument of the power. A very intrusive one, by the way. Uh, the question is that at that time, um, I was very young, but I was uh, um, a member of the um, student movement in, uh, in Italy. Um, we had a, a great consciousness of what was going on. And we had a great capacity of reacting against the power, and especially the power of medicine. In Italy, in 78, after, let's say, about 20 years of uh, uh, public fights, uh, we had the three laws. Uh, which I remember, especially the first one, um, the law number 180, uh, which uh, a very um, revolutionary genius in Italy, a psychiatrist named uh, Franco Basaglia, was able to get to the close uh, of the psychiatric hospitals, the asylums, which was really a kind of public scandal uh, not only in Italy, but all over the world. They were in fact prisons for the life, where people were imprisoned uh, by the, their very young youth and uh, they uh, went through their life until the death. Well, he was able to uh, move uh, the public consciousness against uh, all this, uh, um, let's say, uh, remembrance of, uh, of a past, uh, uh, of a Moyenage past. So uh, what, I what I notice now is that we are absolutely unable to react. Um, you have talked about doctors, patients, responsibility, and so on. But we are in a dystopic scenario exactly as Orwell 
uh, was uh, imaging in 1984. In fact, we have um, the perfect uh, knowledge that uh, there are many other uh, diseases all around the world, uh, let's say tuberculosis, malaria, uh, tumors, cardiovascular diseases, uh, which are still the main cause of deaths uh, in the developing countries and in the developed countries. And at the same time, we are just considering that a simple virus, which we don't know if exists or not, but it's able to close up uh, countries uh, to um, uh, prevent people from traveling, uh, not working, not going to schools. And we are absolutely, um, how would I say, um, convinced that this is a good idea and that probably there is a pandemia. Uh, we don't know if it exists in fact, because the number exactly, the figures are exactly the contrary of what we call as a pandemia. But at the same moment, we have probably today uh, a new uh, state of emergency for uh, six more months in Italy with no reason at all, because we have, uh, uh, let's say, uh, 10, ca 10 cases in Italy, um, no deaths at all, uh, probably some new uh, contagion uh, uh, in some very far away countries, but which is absolutely in the normal rate of uh, flu, seasonal flu, uh, as any other year. Probably even less than, uh, for example, 2015. But I don't understand how it's possible that uh, all the uh, interest and attention of a counter, uh, how would you say, Emilio told this, uh, uh, counter activist, they, they simply seem unable to focus on the geopolitical consequence of all this. In fact, at the very beginning, probably, China was uh, uh, avoiding to, to say publicly that there was a pandemia, or there was an epidemic in, in, uh, in some, some places in China, because it's very dangerous for any country to admit to have an, 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 an epidemic. Um, so we had the declaration of the state of emergency in Italy uh, on January 31st uh, uh, and uh, after that for one month, more than one month. In fact, no one uh, was uh, um, interested in, uh, in the epidemic at all. We didn't know anything. The hospitals were absolutely not prepared to, uh, to face uh, the, the, the admittance of many patients, especially in the northern part of the country, which means something, by the way, because this is not, even in Italy, it has not been an epidemic at all. Uh, concentration, the cluster of deaths were concentrated in the, in the northern part of Italy, in three provinces in Lombardia, some other places uh, in, uh, in, Piedmont, in Piedmont and somewhere in Veneto. Very, very uh, less cases, by the way. But unless the narrative was uh, suddenly uh, provoked the, the, the lockdown of the country, and we have been one of the, the worst, in fact, cases uh, uh, all over the world um, related to the, to the lockdown, and even a country as uh, uh, the, United, the United States or UK where uh, their leaders didn't want to admit any epidemic. At the end, they were forced to admit that there was one and to uh, declare a lockdown in some parts of their country. So I think that we should analyze better what are the determinants why um, the population are so weak now and unable to uh, analyze properly a phenomenon like this. It seems like political um, um, is not, is no more uh, a problem in our life. We have a kind of, um, uh, how would I say, inner reaction against the, the, the word of politics. And that's why probably we prefer to concentrate on uh, other items 
uh, such as um, uh, conspiracy uh, or um, some other um, strange uh, movement uh, uh, around the world, which pushes us in some uh, contradiction of our life. But we are not able anymore to uh, use our rationality, if we still, still have one, uh, to, um, to have the uh, capacity of uh, uh, go through the phenomenon and analyze, uh, as, you, as you told at the, at, the, at the beginning, statistics. Because I am absolutely against, uh, in, in medical practice, against statistics. We cannot try uh, treat a, a patient according to a statistical um, figure because, in fact, a patient needs something else from his doctor. But when we have to talk about public health, we have to talk about statistics. And statistics is not with us, according to me, uh, related to COVID. So um, I really, I'm really amazed uh, about the strange um, reaction. Um, I don't know how it has been uh, created in our consciousness, in fact. This um, anesthesia that is uh, for us completely impossible to focus on main problems, uh, just beginning from statistics, for example, and uh, um, analyze properly what is going on and being able to react against what is going on. Because there is no reaction at all in Italy. We are using masks for our face, for example. You, you walk around in the country and you look at the people can, with no reason at all. They are walking in the sun uh, in, in, in July, uh, in the heat of July, and nobody is wondering why uh, he's wearing a mask on his face, which is absolutely of no use. But uh, it seems to be a kind of... Uh, of trendy fashion, for example. Uh, in fact, there are many fashionable uh, items uh, uh, sold uh, on, on the internet, um, coordinated with, uh, with, um, with the, our um, uh, wear and... Uh, I, I, I really, I really am, I am quite shocked about this. I'm shocked because I think that Italy uh, uh, in my experience, remained one of the very few countries in the world where politics, uh, let's say, until um, the end of the 90s, uh, was something that was familiar to us. Not in the United States, for example, where probably politics was always away from the, the main and current uh, thought of people. But in Italy, um, 20 years ago, we still have some reactions against Berlusconi government, for example. But after that, we have really have uh, um, now uh, experienced this kind, as I told, uh, kind of anesthesia. Um, and I'm not able to, to go further, in fact, because I'm not, I, I, didn't, I didn't find many people um, with I can talk to uh, about this question. But this is a main question for me, and this remains a problem, and uh, this will be probably a huge problem for the, for the future, because if it's going like this, we are to figure out that our uh, reality uh, will be completely uh, um, modified and not for the best. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rosanna, also for your provocative thoughts. And um, I'd like to open to everyone to the, open the floor to, if you have any comments or questions. I have, um, first of all, I would love to, to thank Jose, Pedro, uh, and, and I will ask to ask a question to Cinzia. Uh, thank you so much for your for your point of view. And I would love to hear uh, a little bit more about this notion that uh, uh, is the first time that I, I hear from the anthroposophic point of view. Um, this notion of the brain of the guts kind of thing, and the and the the life that lives in our intestines as part of our oral co complete health 
E non è un concetto antroposofico, è un concetto scientifico che adesso è molto usato, per esempio tutto l'uso eh, dei fermenti lattici che in questo momento sta esplodendo per ogni tipo di patologia è basato su questa scoperta che appartiene anche alla scienza ufficiale che il sistema immunitario è una sorta di cervello nel, intorno al nostro intestino. Cioè eh, la maggior parte dei linfonodi sono messi intorno all'intestino dove dialogano con eh, questa massa enorme di ehm, eh, batteri e virus, di esseri eh, estranei che vivono eh, simbioticamente in accordo con il nostro organismo. Noi abbiamo bisogno di loro e loro vivono grazie a noi. Questa è una scoperta degli ultimi decenni a cui viene dato un enorme rilievo, ma se la leggiamo anche simbolicamente ci può dire molte cose rispetto all'ammalarsi e al guarire. Uh, la maggior parte di questi microrganismi sono uh, innocui, uh, mentre ne, ce ne sono di patogeni oppure alcuni di essi diventano patogeni quando si sviluppano in maniera squilibrata rispetto a tutto il sistema. Ok, um, io credo che l'assunto de... O sea, la, il virus esiste la gente está muriendo, todas estas cosas, pero pienso que como colectivos, como redes, como comunidades, tenemos que empezar a emerger desde un punto de vista más complejo, desde un punto de vista más eh, en una, eh, como de construir esta realidad y construir, reimaginar, como lo decimos siempre en Ecoversidades, una, una realidad posible, una realidad diferente. Y cada vez que reproducimos los mismos conceptos y reproducimos el problema desde el mismo punto de vista, lo único que estamos haciendo es fortalecer el, el sistema, este sistema neoliberal. Y aunque nos podamos resistir a la vacuna y aunque nos podamos resistir al sistema médico, este, siempre vamos a estar en una, en, en una condición de desventaja porque vamos a estar oprimidos y sometidos a, a una cuestión este, regular. O sea, no, yo no descalifico el saber de la ciencia ni el trabajo de los médicos. Solamente pienso que es insuficiente para sostener una humanidad sana y plena. Y, y conectada, donde cada quien tiene que hacer su trabajo, pero no puede ser que la humanidad completa esté sometida a su realización, a su plenitud, a partir de la medicina. Si cambiamos esta, esta dimensión planetaria en nuestro lenguaje, en nuestras acciones, en nuestra conexión, eh, y, y empezamos a mover... Eh, las, a tragarnos al monstruo desde las entrañas. Eh, yo siento que eh, sería interesante empezar a pensar eh, fuera de este paradigma científico, fuera de este paradigma de la medicina, porque la medicina va sobre, eh, medica sobre la enfermedad. No podemos pensar una medicina sobre la salud, porque una persona sana no necesita medicina. Uh -huh. Tenemos que empezar a, a plantear este paradigma en el que la, la persona, nuestros nuevos, nuestros nietos, nosotros nietos, ¿verdad? Ustedes que son gente joven, hijos, este, pueda ser personas saludables, no personas que ya están condicionadas a estar enfermas. El ser humano se está viendo desde la perspectiva en la que ya está condicionado a ser enfermos. ¿Cómo vamos a hacer una vacuna? ¿Qué medicamentos deben de proveer el sistema de salud? Este, hay, hay ya, o sea, esto nos prefigura a una dimensión horrorosa. ¿Cómo podemos entonces hacer que esta humanidad, esta, esto que nosotros somos humanos, ahora y humanas, pudiéramos empezar a construir una sociedad eh, en servicio de los demás, en servicio de la solidaridad, 
este, la hermandad, eh, todas estas redes y tragarnos al monstruo desde adentro, desde el amor, desde la gratitud, desde eh, la comprensión eh, y, y desde la, la salud que nuestras nuevas generaciones, que nuestros nuevos hijos, este, nietos, vecinos, primos, sobrinos, todo esto, eh, tengan, no, no nazcan y no se desarrollen con el miedo a que tarde o temprano se van a morir de enfermedad, sino que van a vivir siempre en salud. Es mi comentario, gracias. But I do have a question, something's been in my mind over the last few months, both in relation to COVID, but also more generally in relation to uh, the kind of critique of, of experts and, and power and scientific power, um, which is this, that uh, as, as you all know, uh, I'm speaking now from, from the US, but as you know, the critique of uh, the medicalization and of COVID and of epidemiologists and of the uh, response to COVID is coming just not from the left and people used to, you know, anthropology of science or the social studies of science or a more general critique of power, but also from the right. So in the US, there have been very strong protests of white nationalists and uh, other groups who are refusing to wear masks and uh, refusing expert opinion, uh, refusing a certain construction of, of science as a, uh, a holder of truth. Uh, and that obviously goes beyond COVID, it also extends to climate change and uh, other forms of, uh, of expertise. So I'm wondering, um, with, with the debates and the critiques that you're raising, where, where do we engage with these kinds of other forms of critique of medicalization and expertise and so forth? And isn't there also a danger that in critiquing some of these things, we could be uh, surreptitiously aligning ourselves with uh, very strange bedfellows as well? So, um, I mean, I think this is just a general comment and observation about, you know, we, we're very good at doing the critique as from the left and critiquing power and critiquing science and uh, uh, the, the social studies of science has done that for, for decades. But now what, what if the right gets hold of these tools now as well and dismantles things which can lead to also very dangerous consequences, particularly for the, those most affected by, uh, by COVID who, who tend to be, as we saw in the last, uh, in the last call, tend to be uh, minorities, tend to be uh, oppressed communities and, and so forth. Okay, um, yes, it, it's really a mess. I mean, um, my uh, thing, I find myself sometimes sharing uh, my uh, opinion with, uh, for example, the opinion of Salvini and Lega and uh, the extreme right uh, in, uh, in Italy. And this is very um, difficult to hold on. But at the same time, uh, for example, in Italy, we have... Uh, the, the left that it, for some reason is even worse. I mean, uh, they um, have a kind of uh, uh, completely closed, completely uh, blind politics in terms of, uh, of uh, healing, especially. Uh, they are those who are uh, trying to uh, uh, Create, create, and, and diffuse the uh, mandatory vaccina uh, vaccination, vaccination for uh, people. But no, I'm not talking about vaccination for COVID. I'm talking about vaccination for flu. Just because, for example, in Lazio, there is the the um, Zingaretti, who is the leader of the who has decided that this is a, 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 an ordinance. Uh, all the people that are uh, over 65 and all the- uh, Young people? Young people, no, no, the, the, the child, okay. children uh, from zero to six and also all the doctors and yes. all, all those that we has to, to, work the... to, to work on, on, uh, on the healing field that has to uh, make the vaccine for the flu. This is completely crazy. So I, I, I understand you uh, when you say, uh, when you 
show us this difference and this uh, possibility to compromise a little bit our opinion uh, with the opinion of uh, the extreme right. But how how to get off from this? I think uh, uh, we have uh, to take a case uh, by case and no reflecting from ideology or from this is it could be banal. I mean I know, but uh, we have to make an effort and uh, analyze case by case, uh, analyze from a different uh, a feeling also, and, and also be aware of what I uh, tried to explain before, that we are also carrying, uh, without our awareness, uh, a lot of prejudice. So also, when we um, talk, and when we uh, define our enemy or the uh, group that we don't like, uh, we still uh, uh, produce, are producing automatism and uh, that we should uh, avoid. And uh, I know it's not easy as, as also the question of Rosanna, how to react. It's, it's difficult to answer to this question because uh, uh, in the last uh, years, I saw all the protests, all the uh, way of reaction were uh, instrumentalized by the power, the power, and we got uh, the worst situation after uh, because, uh, you know, more, uh, uh, a, a more, a, str a stronger, uh, uh, decision about restriction, about law, about repression, and, and so on. So this is something that uh, also I would I would add uh, the um, Josephine comment that maybe uh, instead to um, concentrate ourselves in find a way how to react, we also should. Uh, uh, Canalize our energy in the way to propose something, to create together something that goes in the direction with a certain independence also from all these uh, uh, all these happenings. Eh, premetto che io ho partecipato alle lotte politiche degli anni 70 eh, a cui alludeva Rossana ed è stato un grande dolore per me vedere. Eh, morire proprio quella stagione e io sono arrivata al, alla convinzione che il paradigma politico è morto ed è rimasto uh, come una rappresentazione di parole d'ordine. Ale, mi fermo così non, non ti fa. Um, so, since I was also part of the political struggles and movements of the 70s, and it was with uh, great pain that she recognized that that season has died out, and she became convinced that the political paradigm is dead. Another example is also what's coming, what's em emerging in the, from the school. Cinzia is uh, very keen in dedicating attention on the question of pedagogy and coming from a Steiner pedagogy. Um, she's noticing these um, al transversal alliances that have been created uh, among the different type of teachers from different type of schools to um, mobilize together to defend the right um, of the education and the defense of the right pedagogy, uh, something that is being altered by this uh, um, paralysis that the school and the education system is going through. And we are already seeing the direction that we are taking, I guess, through the uh, technologies and uh, remote learning. So this is an example together with what's happening in the organic or biodynamic uh, food production and distribution where people um, can go beyond the political, beyond, for example, the Green Party that in Italy is dead and uh, not very effective. These are examples of how people can mobilize together without being instrumentalized by the political parties. I think that is uh, really important uh, not uh, to think about the end of politics, but uh, 
what is happening is a switch from politics uh, as uh, was uh, being done before uh, to a center in biopolitics no? and necropolitics. No? And uh, from idea of many things happening in each uh, country to uh, world uh, uh, rulers, no? uh, and uh, the importance, at least in this moment, uh, is shifting from big spaces to family, to the private, to the intimate, no? and uh, from real to what is uh, named the uh, post-reality, no? and uh, the importance of uh, living uh, behind the frames of thinking, feeling, and acting uh, to find uh, new ways. No? Uh, for example, we never stop uh, moving, we never stopped uh, healing. No? Uh, we uh, try to support uh, new ways of uh, proposing change. No? I have uh, been hearing and reading many interesting proposals that uh, take advantage of uh, this uh, situation, conflict and complexity. Uh, trying to find uh, new uh, ways to uh, do uh, politics. Hmm? Um, I missed some of it, but um, I'd like to make a few few points. I th I think we are going uh, through a time where uh, the the system that the Europeans created is in crisis. And the logic of the European nation state, as long as it had the power in a certain way, everything went with that. And also the medical system. So it's a very um, narrow way of thinking of humanity. The, 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 it's missing all of the people of the world. So you, we have a global system and a global health care, which now is encircled by the European thought. And I think that's what our crisis is at this time. And we're going to have to go back and move in the present and forward with all humanity and all the humanity that has created tremendous um, uh, ways of thinking about health. So, you know, it's a new time. I mean, to me, it's a time of um, building new. It's a, it's, um, uh, I, I think uh, the uh, European medical system couldn't really do what was required of it. I mean, I grew up in England, so I'm not talking from another place. I'm talking from that it had a welfare system, but the welfare system was crisis too, because the theory of the, the medical, the theory of the medical system has a flaws in it. It looks at human beings in parts, in small parts, it doesn't have the approach of the holistic, the whole of the body and how it works together. Though now there's a lot of science um, that is, has been created in which, you know, they're trying to grapple with that, but they keep coming back to only the chemical medical, uh, the chemical system in our body, not other aspects of it, like so the, say the nervous system and also just the physiological and the, you know, the sociological being of a human being, um, how that is connected, how that's connected in each of your cells. So, you know, this question of love and social care, um, I'm not dissecting it in such in, in minute individual forms. And, and also, that the body is able to heal itself. It just needs a small amount of help. 
and we have to find out how to do that and i think it's a it's it's not going to be uh, uh, singular in a european system it has to be looked at from a very holistic and also taking on other people's um, health, health, ways of health into uh, consideration. Because if we don't do that, I don't think uh, we can achieve. But if we look at it from uh, that we're all human and that people have been grappling with, um, uh, us, you know, with question of um, our well-being and question of death at, at one end and birth at another end, we can really um, achieve um, in, a hum, in, in a human humility way. Profit motive is sucks, I'm, I must say. So we have to go to um, something much more than what we have. I think it's very narrow. Thank you. I think the, you know, I have, the, several thoughts connected to different people, but I, I want to follow up what Hardeep was saying because maybe it's the most important. I mean, the, the image that you were constructing, let's go with that a little further. I mean, basically, because if you look at agriculture, uh, it's the same. Uh, you have basically a worldview that is almost uh, paranoid, preemptive, uh, breaking um, emergence, trying to control, uh, master, appropriate, own, uh, that is like a, maybe a four or five hundred year process, which uh, is very good at making weapons to attack those things that it fears, which is uh, to master, to enslave, to control. And it's directed this same worldview uh, on on the earth, on on the way that it extracts, uh, destroys, uh, takes, controls, and it's also oriented towards the body. I mean, it's a very uh, effective way, uh, but it's also you know violent and has produced a lot of uh, suffering. And so I think if we just think of the way of medicine as continuous to those other ways in terms of its patriarchy, its kind of racialization, its othering of life itself, its, its cutting into life constantly, separating the human from the, the non-human, but then also the higher human from the, the healthy and the sick, all of it. So I think it's a, it's this in, in this is the cul-de-sac that we're led to, a kind of very uh, paranoid regime uh, that the entire world has depended on. And now something, when you say, uh, oh, this little virus puts it all into crisis. Well, it's not just a little virus. I mean, it's also climate change. It's also every, in every fold of our existence that crisis is more and more apparent or catas catastrophic reality. And this is just one more element of it. And I think the challenge we have right now, I mean, to come back to, to the question that Udi was asking, and uh, I think it re relates to several, several points also uh, brought up earlier. You know, you have basically a, a liberal dimension, which some people still, uh, you know. So basically the, the, the question about the politics, we get confused because there is this constituted politics coming from above at us, whether the fascist or the liberal. I wouldn't call the liberal left. Some but even the left, even the left, even is the part constituted of that. left is also part of it. I mean, it's more opening and breaking because there is this idea of, uh, you know, maybe Rosanna, you mentioned this, uh, uh, it, it floated around for a while. Is this a virus? Is this not a virus? Is this a conspiracy? Who is asking this question and to whose benefit is it? And how does it change our reality and our uh, life uh, in, in a bigger dimension with the ecology, with the earth? Does it really help? Because they put the enemy, like they are enemy of each other, the liberal and the fascist, but they are actually working in a 
in a same goal basically but with different methods with different brutalities on different levels of brutality yeah. because I mean, the liberals the have colonial. been destroying earth by disseminating all their ideology for a while and the fascists have more a kind of idea of root nation and uh, building walls but we cannot deceive or get deceived by these I mean, I understand Italy has a different uh, uh, reality, but let's but like say... like, for example, in New yeah. York, right? There's, or, there's been like a, at least 20 some odd thousand, if not more deaths in this period of the virus than uh, like year over year, no? I mean, uh, sometimes like even Giorgio, we know him, so his writings around it, I mean, we've also shared them, the, this kind of critique Adam. of of the overarching kind of response and control. We, we agree at, to some degree, but when this kind of critique arrives to, to kind of dismissing the data or things like that, I mean, I understand data can be doctored, but like it's very hard to explain how 20,000 more people in a city die from-, but, from but not only that, yeah. right now, let's say the, the government of the US under this uh, whatever name president, they, they want to force universities to open. They so want to force schools they want to open. Force schools to open. So- uh, The control is on either side. It you gets see, confusing. It's, uh, so and what, and what also is, they, you know, about the heat of the summer. And so I agree with you that we should be asking ourselves, why the fuck, why the fuck are we wearing masks on the street? You know? How did we arrive to this point that we walk on the public space or screw public, common space, the, our common world, and we have to walk around with masks? We should ask that question, but not because, oh, who told me to wear a mask, but more like, how do, what are the processes that arrive to this deteriorated level of common life, which are political questions, but they should take us to, I, I think it's becoming more evident, to this kind of colonial process that is a lot much bigger than a right or a left. Because the left, unfortunately, whatever even historically existed of it, and I think Ivan Illich was very... René, you, you froze for a second. Can you go back to the beginning of your sentence? Deteriorating life? You were yeah, saying that, that, that comes back to the colonial cut that I think goes far further than the question of the left and the right because the the left bought a lot of it and Ivan Illich maybe is one of the thinkers that resonates a lot because he understood this kind of bias of of, of a traditional left uh, which is not all of the you know encapsulates all of it and of course there are very beautiful. Uh, aspects of that history that uh, we also have a very con strong connection to, but but it was part of this internalizing of a modernist ethos, which underneath the modernity was all this hidden violence towards earth, towards life, towards other epistemologies, other ways of knowing, other ways of thinking. So I think Europe is at the center of like th rethinking all of that. And that's very difficult to do at an institutional level because those institutions are imbued with that supremacy of their epistemology, their worldview. And, and so it's very difficult, I think, uh, to, to navigate and how to find, but coming back to the US, I mean, it is a site of open experimentation on the, because right now you do have a place. I mean, Brazil is uh, more uh, in Mexico in its own way. You guys can say more, but there it's an open field of experimentation because the, the more fascistic side is trying to say, okay, all the states that are now having a lot of issues with virus and their hospitals are inundated, Arizona, Florida, Texas, they're all the ones that said, forget the mask, go out, there was a social pressure even not to wear a mask because Trump was saying everything is fine. Open things up. I mean, why open things up? To, to restart the stupid economy, they want to open things up. So the question of us saying, oh, let the schools be open. I mean, those schools are teaching bullshit. Those businesses are doing bullshit. They're destroying the fucking earth. So why open things up? I mean, we don't want to open things up or return back to normal. We want to 
go further with the catastrophic reality and, and say we change need it. to change everything. So this is, the, this is the way, if we're talking politics, that's where I think we should be thinking. I feel happy that, uh, I mean, to found again, um, I mean, I suffer from isolation uh, and I'm happy to find the um, friends again. I mean, I know we are all out there, but it's good to reconnect uh, in my... So anyhow, uh, I, I want to say that I, I can share this uh, 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 latest uh, um, contribution and in the sense that I also feel like I think mo most of us that we are at, at the real end of this modernist mechanization uh, <clears throat> paradigm economical philosophical political and uh, so that's we are seeing the destruction of this sense uh, and the in everything right like uh, we work but we are more poor uh, we produce more vegetables and agriculture, but we are more sick. And um, the, the standardization, uh, the statistics as a method for medicine at, at shown uh, its limits. Even if on the personal level, I live with it. My husband is a scientist, so in the family, we are not ready for certain... Uh, <laughs> We're not ready yet for a certain topic because, uh, it, it, uh, anyhow. So, and, uh, but I, one thing I can't tolerate anymore is the ideology, the starting from big uh, topic. I have decolonized myself entirely from, uh, no, I hope I have decolonized myself and most I, that I can from ideology and political point of view first and then uh, assumption deduction uh, no i want to start from my reality and my measurable what is measurable because i see the nonsense not in general but in the jest that people do around me that to me don't make any sense even uh, take a piece of paper sneeze it and put it away i'm like oh my god that's crazy i mean like no you don't want to you want to reuse I'm just saying that my vocabulary has been uh, uh, reset on the micro. And uh, I'm, uh, it's the only field where I can feel I can intervene and do something. And uh, so um, we are facing the void, I feel, the distraction and the coffee, whatever that is, I don't even, I don't know, and I don't know if I will never know. If this, this articulate everything right we don't have office in downtown anymore rats are hungry in new york city because they, there's no restaurants open and uh appunto to the school opening uh, but parents can't go to work i mean the whole thing is dissembling right so this is a great opportunity for anybody who has something constructive and, and, and loving and generous and making sense so like time. We have a, an opportunity to renegotiate the so-called social contract uh, with the rest of the world. So I hope, for example, last thing that I, that I did, uh, nature, I don't know, body is nature so like you know like so i i'm just want to make an invitation I, I i can't function on the political level in in terms of theory so nothing that's my so my health starts from something i can digest uh, <laughs> in my guts and uh, i can't uh, work with the uh, too many big problems i need to put that in my hands otherwise and uh, uh, nothing it's my measure my measure that's what it is so i'm sorry i hope that will be helpful for something anyhow the eye is an illusion this is a construction i what is i i mean there's no uh, the, i don't believe in this my body 
my body, not my identity. Identity, I don't know. Um, no, identity. My body. My body exists. It's nature. It's what I eat and right. So my ex physical existence is a, a one piece of nature which is connected with the rest, and I can measure things up because the mechanization is the endless, the infinite, right? It's the linear thinking that never ends, right? It's the promise of the infinite. Instead, uh, the body is the experience of the finite, of something that is... So it's another logic, you know, and uh, it's an only logic I can uh, accept in the new world let's say for me for uh, i mean it's another paradigm mm, on this question of the i and the we and our body my body and you know starting to understand that we are part of a bigger metabolism and that our bodies are interconnected and interrelated and interdependent with a larger body with other elements and mm. We've been learning so much with our deep, for example, about the collective uh, uh, impact and uh, the collective healing, how we, we can also help others uh, healing. And, and in that way, we also heal the other elements beyond the human, um, more than human and the other relations. And I'd like also to give a little time, for example, to Pedro and Josefita, who have an incredible practice of uh, uh, re, uh, restoring and regenerating and resurfacing all the traditional knowledge of indigenous uh, communities where they live, and how this is also connected with the larger movement or unlearning this paradigm that have been so imbued with necropolitics and learn or uplearn, relearn those knowledges and those traditions as you actively support healers in each family, basically with your center, with your school, you really enable this knowledge to resurface and to be collective, uh, um, co to be a common, to be for everyone. So I'd like either a deep or or um, Josefita and Pedro to share a little more about your practice and how you really organize that. The healing that with uh, Tongren, this is, um, it's called the, um, that's the name of uh, the um, healing therapy. And uh, what we've, uh, first of all, it's, um, uh, it's part of it is uh, 3000 years old. And um, it um, sort of originates in China. And um, so now people have um, taken that information, that healing uh, practice, and also uh, connected it with us today in our own times. So, so what, one of the biggest factors has been that in, uh, um, in allopathic medicine, you only uh, look at the medical, the med you know, the chemical side. You give chemicals to human beings. You try to find out what's wrong and you give a chemical. What we've done is that we've um, taken the, uh, the nervous system and we, we are able to manipulate the nervous system. Uh, so instead of using a chemical, we let allow the body itself to use its own chemicals to heal. All we do is we unblock the, um, the nervous system wherever it's blocked, or if the muscle is blocked, or if the artery is blocked, and we open it up and let uh, the system uh, regulate itself. And it will, because the body generates its own chemicals, you really don't need very much from the outside. It has a very internal uh, a mechanism of growth that um, isn't, we don't even look at that. We don't allow that to come into being. So I just want to say that much, that there is other ways of doing things. It's just 
the medical complex, and I'm sorry to say whoever doctors are here for allopathy, it's, you're blocked, you're narrow thinking. You can't, and you can't help it. This is not, I'm trying to be critical. It's your, the system doesn't allow you that. So I think it's very hard. I, that's what we have found that doctors, um, they look at you and they laugh at you because they're so conditioned in their own um, allopathic way that they think that's the only possibility and that there is nothing else. And there is so much more in this, um, in this um, uh, human space that we have created. It's just not allowed to um, flourish. Thank you. Just, uh, we think like uh, Hardeep uh, says, uh, that there are multiple strategies uh, and multiple uh, alternatives. We promote interculturality. In our case, uh, we have a contact with the ancestral uh, cultures. No? Here is with us uh, uh, Nanabiki. She's uh, 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 here with us and maybe she can talk. She's a uh, partera. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, from uh, Purepecha culture in Michoacán. So maybe better than uh, talk myself, I can give the word uh, to her. No? So uh, Nanabiki. Master Anskun, Yamenuch. Yari Gorish and Virginia San Diego to Rajini Verati, Rajam, Hata Kori Urwap, Kahitzi Nabitishk, Katakita Pokat. There is a young Rosan, Eski Purepechek, Kahinianja Gorish and Universidad, Kayaya Shurashka, Nana Josefina, Katata Pedro, and Susan Luis Potosi. There is a Shuakas and Arine Eski Purepechek, Michoacana Napuski. Buenos días, les voy a traducir un poco de lo que dije. Mi nombre es María Virginia Santiago Toral. Yo vengo de la comunidad indígena de Calzonsin. Mi lengua es purépecha y soy nacida allá en Michoacán. Soy médico tradicional partera, más de 50 años de partería. Y este, conocido aquí de la maestra José y del maestro Pedro. Viéndolo bien, este, por ejemplo, nosotros los purépechas, no tenemos esa creencia que existe esa enfermedad, pero a los que sí creen también les estamos ayudando, les estamos apoyando. Nosotros en la medicina tradicional, pues en, con las plantitas, con las plantitas este, nosotros lo hacemos en, para que se unten. Hacemos preparados con alcohol, con hierbas frescas y con eso le equilibramos este, la calentura o el dolor. La parte que afecta del pecho hacia arriba es lo que nosotros hacemos. Y, este, y le damos pues, algún tecito, algún tecito caliente o también este, les podemos ayudar con, con agua hervida, con algún tipo de plantita también. Así como dicen, este, el calor, vaporización. el vaporización. Nosotros ahí en mi pueblo pues, lo decimos bien sencillo, de, de respirar el calor porque eso es lo que hace la respiración. Y este, nosotros en esa forma pues no nos da miedo a la vez que yo ando por acá. Pues no. Nosotros allá en mi comunidad estamos tranquilos. En las ciudades pues sí, está eso ahí, como a 20 minutos está la ciudad de Uruapan y, y ahí sí, ahí sí dicen que pues que diarios están muriendo, que de 6 a 8 hasta 10. Pero pues que yo vea algo claro, pues no es cierto. No es cierto porque este, en, en mi comunidad, pues, tan cerca es que está y no hemos padecido nada de eso. Sí se sí han muerto algunas dos, tres personas, pero pues ya de muy avanzados de edad, pero no de esa enfermedad. Eso es lo que yo les puedo compartir, que es, más que nada es la creencia o la fe que tiene uno. Que con todo eso, pues, se puede sanar, se puede curar. Eh, nosotros eh, buscamos el empoderamiento de la persona a través de la conexión con la tierra, de la conexión con el, con el cielo, con las estrellas, de la conexión con nosotros mismos, de la conexión con la familia, con la comunidad. Eh, en México somos una, una sociedad multicultural, plurietnica y multilingüística. 
tenemos más de 365 variantes lingüísticas y tenemos cerca de 300 culturas distintas. Eh, tenemos muchos saberes ancestrales. Y bueno, ahorita, por ejemplo, el trabajo de, de nuestra área es permitirle a la gente reconocerse en una cultura, reconocerse como, como hijo de la cultura purépecha o mazagua o zapoteca, rarámuri, porque todos tenemos una madre cultura antecedente. Y de pronto llegó la globalización y toda esta este, cultura de consumo donde nos alejaron muchísimo de nuestros antecedentes culturales. Buscamos recuperar nuestros saberes en herbolaria, buscamos recuperar nuestros saberes del clima. Este, cuando hay un viento malo, saber distinguir de un viento malo, de un viento bueno, saber distinguir de una planta, de un enteógeno, este... Eh, nocivo de algo que es ritual, de una conexión con el clima, con la tierra, eh, de ir construyendo eh, en un ambiente más, más propio. Y, y tenemos muchos estudiantes, sobre todo jóvenes. Ahorita tenemos una comunidad, tenemos, estamos en el tercer, la tercera generación del Doctorado en Nueva Antropología de la Salud y a través de ese medio, este, Trabajamos por línea o presencial en las comunidades donde nos permiten entrar porque no siempre es tan, eh, tan fácil entrar, ¿no? Y trabajamos con mujeres, con mujeres, este, mujeres tierra, pero también promovemos el respeto desde, desde unos derechos que no se han nombrado porque eh, tenemos que decolonizar esa concepción de derechos humanos y tenemos que empezar a pensar en el derecho de los seres tangibles e intangibles. Para nosotros el agua es un ser vivo, para nosotros el fuego es un ser vivo, para nosotros la tierra es un ser vivo, pero si no lo reconocemos como tal, pues la vamos a seguir contaminando. Si no reconocemos que el viento es un ser vivo, entonces lo vamos a seguir ensuciando, entorpeciendo la, la naturaleza, los animales, las piedras, pensamos que todos tenemos alma y que tenemos que ir recuperando poco a poco ese respeto. Cada comunidad a la que llegamos nos comparte sus saberes y nosotros como, pues como líderes, por decirlo así, de este proyecto, lo compartimos con otras partes. Siempre les decimos a la gente, si compartes algo con nosotros, ten la seguridad de que nosotros lo vamos a compartir. No firmamos... Este, actas o cartas de, de, exclusividad. de exclusividad. Nuestro libro dice que se comparta y se fotocopie y se regale y que el conocimiento que está ahí es de todos y de todas. Y tampoco entramos en esta... Para nosotros el saber es colectivo, el saber es de todos y todas y, y, y las personas de cualquier país, las personas cuando nosotros nosotros... Este, compartimos saberes de la India, compartimos saberes de la, de la cultura china, de la medicina china, compartimos saberes de nuestras culturas, zapoteca, este, huichola, purépecha, y, y tenemos diferentes trabajos de investigación y siempre estamos en ese proceso de investigar, de promover, de buscar una una educación distinta desde el corazón de la tierra, desde el corazón de las personas, donde todos nos hacemos responsables de todos. Donde yo enseño porque tengo mucho que enseñar, pero también aprendo porque tengo mucho que aprender. Y en ese proceso este, vamos generando eh, cultura con, con, nuestras, con nuestras comunidades, porque no tenemos una sola comunidad, tenemos muchas comunidades a las que denominamos familia este, Nierica del Campo Punto Cero, eh, que viene de, de ahí donde no hay nada y surge todo. Y pues no sé, esa es en una, pa una parte. Muchas gracias. I'm uh, talking from San Francisco where the pandemic is not so bad. I just barely made it from Italy back to here when um, things were getting hot in Italy a couple of months ago. And I have been observing what's going on and how the whole country here, how in Italy, how in other countries. And this conversation today just 
is making me reflect on uh, how separated we are, uh, especially after the last uh, intervention from um, uh, Pedro and uh, I forget uh, uh, his partner's name. Um, and and the other woman that also made an intervention we're so separated from our traditional knowledge which at this point in in uh, as speaking as a caucasian uh western person um it goes back who knows how long ago um and um so and uh, i'm observing here there are people in san francisco who get on a social chat you know there's an app called uh, next door and it, it brings together people from the neighborhoods and they can just vent they can just release all of their anguish all of their fears all of their neurosis and so why don't they wear masks they came so close to me ah this is terrible so there is all of this on one side on the other side, I totally see the intervention by a gentleman before, who I believe is in the United States, and he was saying, we have these very strange bedfellows now because uh, also the right is saying no masks. And so everything seems to be so complicated and so confusing. And, and I also appreciate Renee's intervention who is saying, let's go all the way. Let's not reopen the school. It's true because schools don't teach anything. I totally agree. Just today I read um, um, a teacher in the United States who said, I gave up teaching. I am going to become some kind of a business consultant. I love teaching. But the, the institution of teaching in the United States is so broken, is so messy that I just cannot, cannot do anything there. And so she's getting out. Um, and uh, so reflecting about all of these different, um, how can I say, forces, and how still trapped we are, trapped at home or trapped in our own fears. You know, if we are a little older thinking, I could get it and I could go um, very soon or who cares if I get it, I'll go. Um, you know, between all of this extreme uh, thinking, if you want, uh, and not knowing yet uh, um, what to do. Uh, a couple of days ago, a friend of mine invited me to uh, come uh, to a small concert, a band from Cuba in San Francisco. And uh, they blocked a street or two or three maybe. Um, and uh, so this band at 12 o'clock Saturday was playing very good music. Uh, three people, three men who lived in the house above. So they just came down, they brought their instruments. People brought their chairs, you know, their popcorn, whatever sandwiches and just relaxed. It was sunny. And uh, I was thinking, okay, so, and no mask a few people had masks but apart from that people were just relaxing and it was free and it was kind of spontaneous and this band was collecting money for black lives matter movement so there was a mixture of political action together with some spontaneous just you know gathering with music music i think as art in general can really help us now it always has helped us, but it can continue to help us. Um, so uh, I would like for these chats to continue. That's my proposal because there are so many um, different, different point of views, different experiences. Um, and I don't think we can uh, end it here. I mean, we should uh, continue to discuss and exchange ideas and uh, and trying to figure out, you know, how we can manage. Um, I personally have a garden, orto, uh, small, but full of vegetables. So for me, that is very important because uh, it, it's a dialogue with nature at the same time. Um, uh, how can I say, yeah, I don't have a job right now, so it's economically also useful. Um, but um, I'm lucky that way for now. And uh, I know other people cannot share this luck. And so, uh, yeah, anyway, 
without trying to make it too messy, I just advocate for, and I hope uh, we can continue and, you know, maybe meet again in a little while. I just want to make a comment about the school. I mean, um, I think it's an error um, generalized things because um, one thing <coughs> is university and uh, another thing is uh, kindergarten. Another thing is a uh, school for, school. for uh, for children, primary school. <clears throat> primary school, yeah, and uh, you know, for for kids uh, uh, to be together and and to play together because school we don't That's we true. don't have to imagine the school the classic public school. There are many forms of school that are very interesting. To be together is the vital sap for them. They cannot stay, you know, uh, and the school in that terms uh, is something that is very vital and they need it. So one of the danger of this um, reasoning that comes from uh, the COVID is that we tend to generalize things. And, and this is this self-referential automatism that I was talking about before. We have taken, take case by case, this is my suggestion, I mean, how I see things that can be better uh, explained or analyzed. I want really to thank you, Emilio, for giving the impulse and organizing this call with Cinzia and uh, really thank you so much to also Rosana, Jose and Pedro to being with us. Thank you, Gerardo, for taking care of the translation. Thank Jose to helping with the, with the tech of the Zoom meeting. Really a pleasure to see all of you. So I hope to see you all very soon and thank you so much again.